Hello and welcome! I am Triple Helix, and this is another cute indie game called Ruse or Reus. Reuse. Reus? I, I don't know how it's pronounced. But it's. That's the title right there. And it's. I'm not exactly sure how to explain it. I can sort of classify it as a. I can classify it as a bit of. You see, so it's sort of. A little bit like SimCity, but not really. You sort of start from nothing and build your cities up. I know there's a game that does something similar to that, but I just don't remember the name of it. Although this one has a very interesting way of going about it. And I can show you that as soon as this game decides to load. The loading screen, the loading times are a little bit long, considering sort of how small it is, but can't complain too much. Now, if I'm right, we should just start off right off the bat, yes. And we have these four guys here are four sort of creatures who can meld this broken planet into something that's somewhat habitable. So I guess we'll just start right off the bat. And they all have like their own special abilities. They can sort of do something with the environment. And what this guy's gonna do is he's gonna create an ocean for us so that that way this guy over here can then he can create a forest except I hit the wrong button there he can create a forest right here so that way we can you know sort of have some sort of habitable space on this rock and I'm not sure what this guy does hmm alright well I haven't learned anything about him yet Anyways, uh, this is a fun little indie game that's available on Steam, and that I quite and I quite like it. Personally, it's a it's a very it's the art style. I, I really enjoy the art style. The art style is really nice. It's got its own little charm with it, and it's definitely a very interesting concept in terms of what it sets out to be. I mean, you start with this sort of uninhabitable. Um, yes, I know that. You start with this uninhabitable rock, and then you can sort of grow it, and you can start seeing people appear. You can, you start seeing these villages, and you can help them grow to become the to become more powerful and to evolve as a species. And then you have all these giants who do it all. So instead of it just being, you know, some generic thing, you can sort of you can set out to create whatever you want with the world. It's again, it's. It's kind of like SimCity, except the difference between this and SimCity is that SimCity is much more, you know, build buildings and stuff, while well, this one is create civilization. Oh, it's it's sort of like Spore in the whole creating of civilizations. And that's like the only comparison that I can draw. Which one of these are the ones that can make animals? You are. So we will put some animals here. I'm still not entirely sure what this guy does. It looks like he can create some stuff. He also looks like he's gonna you know, toxify everything, but whatever. For the most part, I feel like that the game is, it's a beautiful, it's a very pretty game is one thing. New no man is roaming the planet. Uh, okay, I'm making a desert over here, which this guy rose the thing there to do that, so I'm going to get are no we need we can't do that we have to plant domestic animals which I have to wait for all right maybe we'll create another ocean with him over here yeah, like right there is good uh, one complaint that I do have is that it's a very small world to sort of create which is a little bit annoying I feel that it's small anyway it might not be actually it might not actually be as small as I think it is but it feels like it's kind of small where it's just this sort of small rock and I've only I've created two forests and a desert and I'm already sort of running out of land to use although it may end up I may end up being able to get more are these guys um I should explain sort of the civilization building aspects of it people will begin to create these sorts of things like the they settle when you place food in an area and they can settle it then you have their borders so when there's food inside of those borders they can use that or wealth or technology or anything like that then they start working on specialization projects which they can use to 
advances a civilization and you have to meet the requirements which are here. You sort of just click on the thing to see what they're doing and then you can see what they need to do. You need to have 15 food in use, which we have 14. They should be going to, they should go to 15 soon. And then we have to put technology in use. This guy does have does allow for tech to be used, so I will use him. Uh, I'm trying to see somewhere I can put it here without it affecting anything, so that's what I'll do. And then I wanted to go get see what is he doing? Yeah, that's that's a lot of technology right there. So that should be enough for them to um to build that school. Where's there he is. I want this guy and I want him to put some chickens or some domestic animals in the desert over here so people can inhabit it. And it's it's a very interesting sort of way of going about it because you can sort of have these multiple civilizations across your across the globe and you sort of manage them all, you build them up from nothing, which I find really cool and interesting. And it is sort of small and also something else that I feel is a little bit uh, pesky is that I haven't played a ton. It looks like one of your villagers is getting quite greedy. The greedier a village is, the more likely they are to attack other villages. Okay. So, that's introducing greed. We're basically like, if you if they grow as a civilization too fast, they will become greedier and greedier, which is represented by that face. At which point, they'll start attacking other villages for stuff. But I feel like this game, I haven't played a lot of it, so I don't know if it gets more sort of... I don't know if it gets more, how to say, deep than what it is. I mean, I love the game as it is, but I feel like it, it's, it will eventually end up becoming a bit, just, it doesn't feel like it has a whole ton of replay value that once you get through it a few times or so, once you build a few worlds and civilizations, especially considering that the environment is completely the same every time, it feels like the, sort of the fun will begin to sort of run out. Although, it's not as bad, uh, it's not too bad considering that in terms of money, I think this only costs like 10 or $15 on Steam, and just, and you can get it on Desert too, so like 10 or $15, I think it's $10 for this game, which is, I believe, completely worth it. And again, I will say that I am not, I have not played a lot of this game, so I don't feel like I can go and absolutely say that this game is a complete ripoff, you shouldn't spend your money on it, or this game is a little bit too one-sided for me, or just too much of the same thing. But, definitely, I feel like it does sort of have the issue of, it feels like it's a bit... Should the school be done? Um, 15 of technology in use. I don't have quite enough for that. Can you make another one of these without disrupting anything? I'll put it over this, because they don't need that much food. Raise up some more technology. That Will that keep the fertility? I'm not sure. No, it just replaces it with technology. Which is okay, I can live with that. Wow, food got cut down ridiculously. Oh, because it stopped the food in both of those places. Alright, that's okay. Because the food's not really a problem. I also feel like I'm not... I can't accurately represent this, because I'm not really sure how this game sort of I know how this game works but I don't I'm never I've never really been good at any of this stuff any of these games I've always been sort of just getting by by sort of getting lucky and figuring things out for myself forest ambassador ah okay so ambassadors are another thing that I want to show off they're basically what they do is you can br bring them up on top of one of these giants and you can increase, enhance their abilities. And the rock guy right here, he's pretty useful to upgrade, so I'll pick him up with that. And I believe that they finished their school here. Yep. And another forest village over here. Uh, where's the ocean guy? Because I want to bring him over here to maybe bring some chickens in there. Yeah, we'll put in some chickens right here. So, I really, I don't think I can do this game justice, and all I can say is that, in my opinion, I really enjoy it, but I feel like I'm 
I feel like I'm just not getting something. Like, I feel like maybe I haven't played it enough. Maybe I haven't gotten far enough in it. I know that there's a variety of things you can do in it. And it's not ridiculously complicated. In fact, it's actually relatively easy to understand. But again, I'm just no good at it. And I'm not really good at understanding things like this in general. But I really do love the idea, the sort of creating your world. Instead of just popping up things out of the blue, you can sort of take these giants to create the world and to you can sort of take you can use these giants to sort of build the world from nothing into you know a habitable and nice place in fact I kind of want to take him and I want to put another forest right over here and you can destroy villages too which I've inadvertently done a number of times you can take sort of does anybody do wealth? yeah you do wealth you can build a river or anything near a village, or build an ocean. You can get this guy to build an ocean near a river, and it will destroy it. Which is sometimes amusing, but I don't think it's nearly as amusing as SimCity sort of blowing up everything with a natural disaster. Although, again, I don't think that this is a fair comparison to SimCity. I feel like that this is a bit of a SimCity and the Spore mixed. Because you sort of take things... You sort of start with these small villages, and you grow them into something bigger. And I think you just do it, because apparently there was like some sort of 30 minute time limit. Nature's looking promising, but it could do even better. Have you tried making symbioses? Um, symbioses. I'm still not sure I understand those. Those, I believe, are just building, sort of, not building, but just people working with the environment better. Let me see here. Nothing over here, so we'll put some fruit. And this village is doing pretty okay. Let's see over here. They're pretty well off too. In fact, we could probably get another civilization going like right over here. By putting some more chickens. To wait to start a village, you have to have a food source nearby. If there's no food source, they will not inhabit it. Inhabit it. People will just ignore it. And you can sort of like, if you look closely, you can sometimes see the nomads or the... Um, travelers just coming up on a horse to settle in a village. And I really do like the art style. Like, I can't stress that enough. The art style, it's a, it's a beautiful game. It's a very well-drawn, artistic game. And I definitely, the gameplay is quite, I, I enjoy it a lot. It's very, it's a very calm, relaxing, peaceful sort of experience. And I, I really enjoy this game. No matter how much I nag on it, no matter how much I say this is a sort of shallow experience, this is it doesn't feel like it's that worth, you know, $10. This doesn't feel like it should be getting the praise that it's been getting. Uh, I, I really do enjoy this game. I really, really like it. It's quite enjoyable to sort of send your giants around to help build these supposedly helpless people into some into bigger civilizations and bigger things. You can sort of help. you You shape their future, basically. That's a really nice thing about it. You shape their future. You make them who they are. And that's a really... It's a really interesting thing about that. Also, it's... Rather fun to mess with them sometimes. Uh, I was going to build some more... Stuff. I was going to put some more wealth here, but... I don't think I can do that. It doesn't look like any of these other places are getting settled. Can I create a swamp with this guy? Okay, so I can turn anywhere that's wet into a swamp, basically. So, I don't want to turn that... I can turn that little patch of forest right there into swamp, but that'll be it. Whoops. Swamp there. So, like, right... That should do it. It highlights the ground where it's going to affect, which is really nice, because otherwise I don't want to be guessing, like, where that's going to go up and maybe inadvertently end up killing people. I do have to say, the tutorial does a nice job of explaining everything, thankfully. There's not much left to be guessed. It explains everything you want and does it in a somewhat, it doesn't do it in the fastest way possible, but it does it in quick enough. I don't feel like it drags on for too long. You can sort of just get right into the game pretty early on. Just going to put some more food over there in case somebody wants to settle. The villagers over here seem to be doing fine. I want to put some, get some more wealth there so I can finish there, so I can get them to finish their project, which is running out of time, their trade post. So it's it's more precious minerals. Where can I put these where it's not going to upset everybody? No, I can't put it there. I could put it there. And I probably will. 
And I need to get some more food here somehow. That's another thing I'm not really sure about. I don't really... Uh, yes, I know. That's this. But I don't really know how to properly, lo you know, allocate space to materials. And as you can tell, I don't really play these games that often. I'm... I don't generally play a bunch of these games because I'm I'm pretty bad at them. But this one, I can I find that I could be spending quite a long time with this. And I definitely think you should support the developers and give them all your money right now. Not all your money. Give them the $10 that they're asking for this game. If this is... If you if what you're seeing here is sort of interesting, if you're the kind of person who likes building civilizations out of nothing, if you're the kind of person who likes these sort of slow and methodical sort of building things, then you'll like this game quite a bit, I believe. This is... A, it's very enjoyable to it's very enjoyable to sort of build these small little people into you know something way bigger and this right here this is another ambassador who I believe I want to give to what does this do unlocks a desert ambassador upgrades a mineral with a noble aspect adds wealth I don't need to really more wealth what about our jungle guy over here what will it get us if we take him Upgrades an animal with a hunt aspect. Adds food and danger. Uh, that doesn't really sound too good. What does this guy get? You get this. Mox. The ocean giant digs itself into the ground and upgrades surrounding patches with fertility boost. Um, remember that you can train these resources. Okay. Um, I think I'll take him with the ocean giant. That seems to be my best plan of action here. Course of action. And we'll get him moving over there. What do they want for this? Um, they need more food. So once that guy picks that up, I can use that new ability to increase the fertility over here. Because these guys are doing fine. They don't seem to be building anything else. Oh, no, they are building something else, actually. They're building a temple now. So we need to increase the fertility and the other stuff. So you need we need more technology here. What's this do? Okay, so that just damages villages. That doesn't really sound good. Uh, I don't like any of that stuff, really. So, yeah, probably just this. There's nothing over here, so I can just plant this here with, you know, no real issue. And do they need anything else? They need more food, right? 80 food. It's a lot of food. Okay. So, I think I'll plant a little bit more of that here. Then once the... Because I think the... Yeah, you've picked up the guy. And they sort of just ride on their heads. I find that really fun. They just sort of sit on top of their heads. We'll test this out here. See what it does. Oh, that affects... It's an area of effect. So... This is probably the place I'm going to want to do that. Um, yeah, because that'll get both of those. So I'll do that there. And that should cover both of those plants and increase the fertility of those. And he'll move in that direction. And also another thing that I like about this is it isn't nearly as slow as something like SimCity when you want to get money you can sort of just build whatever you want as soon as you have cuz there's there's a bit of a cooldown between these but it's not too too long which is really nice because I don't that's one thing that I don't like about these games sometimes is that I feel like I play them for that I feel like a lot of the time that I spend with them is just sitting there doing something else while I wait for me to get for myself to get enough money so I can build another project because it's not like I can just sit here and be like, alright, well, let me just put some more stuff, let me put some more stuff, let me put some more stuff until eventually you have enough. Unless I have a significant source of money in these games. This one, thankfully, it's just a short little bit of a cooldown. When you... you there's just a short little cooldown to slow you down. So that way you can't just constantly be throwing things everywhere, even though it takes them a little while to walk. Let's see what this does. I'm kind of interested. It just creates a rain... Does it do anything? Um, it creates arrows, from what I can tell. Doesn't seem to be doing much more than that. But I can work with it. Let me see, what does that say that it does? The ocean giant creates a blessed rain that upgrades surrounding patches with a fertility boost and heals the ocean giant. They actually have health? Wait, so they actually have health. That's interesting, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a really interesting aspect. I don't think I've gotten far enough to experience that. So this game is actually deeper than I thought it was. I mean, I enjoyed it anyways, but... Wow, that's actually kind of interesting. I'm going to try and just plant over this, because then I can see what that does. 
Does it create anything else? Does not appear to. So I'll just roll with that. So yeah, that's a really interesting thing. The shrine challenge. What was the shrine? I must have been somewhere else. Oh, that wasn't here. Alright, so the barracks. That's just still a significant amount of food that I don't really have enough to support. Let's see here. Anybody else working on a project that I can work with? Does not appear to be so. These guys? Oh, they might have been the ones that I failed. Whoops. Oh, well. Anyways, I feel like I've showed off enough of this game, so that, at least to the point where it's not going to take me five hours. Or not five hours, but, you know, a good half hour to figure out what the rest of this game is. And I'm going to say, from what I've played, it's really enjoyable. I really love the art style. I love the idea of sending your people sending these giants around the world to sort of raise mountains, create deserts and forests and swamps and oceans to build these people who are, you know, to bring up civilizations and to put them, meld them into your own image, which is really cool. Um, my complaints, it is, I, I can't say that it's shallow or that it's non or that it's kind of just repetitive, it's just doing the same thing for the rest of the time you play this game, because apparently these guys have health, which may or may not do something. And I just don't feel like I've played enough of this game to absolutely know that. So I will just trust that, you know, the game gets better. And also, I love the game anyway. It's a great game if you're the kind of person who enjoys the sort of methodical and slow sort of building things up. Except this one does it faster than a lot of other ones, I think. Which is a godsend if you're somebody like me who's just hate sitting there when you're playing SimCity for, you know, 30 minutes waiting for your money to be enough so you can build that next project. That's the most annoying thing in the world. But this game doesn't have that, just cooldown time. Which, again, is really nice. And with this sort of nice view of our small little civilization here, I'm gonna call it. Go buy this. It's a great game. Um, if you, you're not into these games, I don't think that this is a genre changer from what I can tell. But if you're even remotely interested in this game, I'd say go buy it. It's a very, very enjoyable experience. Anyways, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Um, contest going on in the description. Check there for more information. Also, link to the devs site in the description below. And until next time, this is Triple Helix, signing off.